Shall we go through your biography? Or no. we okay. Um, we are interested in having a discussion about this piece, 17 and in AUC. Uh, and in AUC. Um, the reasons for which I hope will emerge through the discussion, but I think also it's a specific question to ask. Um, very practically speaking, it was a work we intensively discussed, um, including in the exhibition, and eventually the decision not to. Um, but what came up out of it sort of gave us the indication that we should speak about it here. Um, so I would like to start very simply by asking Hassan and, and discussing with him just a very kind of straightforward and um, extensive description of the project and exactly what it is. I'm sure many of you are completely familiar, but there are elements that get lost in memory and also as many people who are not familiar also with the work. Um, so, this okay. Yes. Uh, okay. Well, first, um, uh, 17 and the AUC was, uh, an event that took place over a period of two weeks in 2003. Uh, it was, uh, a situation, I was invited by the American University in Cairo, which is the university I went to as an undergraduate student. I was invited by the university to, to do an exhibition uh, at the time, at the Malika Gallery, at the time that was uh, the gallery space they had. And in discussion I came up with this project called 17 and the AUC, which, in which I wanted to build a soundproofed room, a one-way mirrored soundproofed room, uh, in which the audience can see inside, but in which the person who's inside is completely isolated and only sees a reflection of themselves. They cannot see the outside world. And I wanted to, over the span of 14 nights, to basically inhabit this room and to remember, to try to remember everything that happened when I was an undergraduate student for the span of two weeks and to be smoking and drinking beer, which was kind of the natural thing I would do if I'm talking about something like this, somehow in this situation. And the university refused to to hold the exhibition on university grounds because uh, alcohol was banned on campus, and so they were they couldn't do it. And in in discussion with uh, with Scott Bailey, who was then the head of the of the Falaki Gallery and the art department or the art unit, as it was called, I think, uh, I decided. He said, "I can give you the budget, and you do you do it, do whatever you want, kind of." And so uh, I took the budget and found an apartment and an empty, a, a big, massive, empty apartment, and constructed that room in the apartment, and did this performance for 14 nights, in which uh, every night I would. Uh, oh, you can, you can show the windows. Yeah. Yeah. Every night, so the general ones, yeah. maybe. Every night I would, I would for four hours. Uh, from, uh, from uh, I think from 7 to 11, from 7 to 11 p.m. I would uh, but make it, make it, make it uh, like the well, yeah, screen, view a slideshow. Oh, thanks. So over the, the span of these two weeks, every night for four hours, I was in this room and drinking, smoking, and trying to remember everything that happened between 1990 and 1995 when I was a student in that university. There was, however, uh, uh, a set of rules for this, for this procedure. So I could only speak about direct memories, absolutely direct memories, like this happened, that happened, I saw this person, we did this, etc. I could only speak about uh, this, this, this situation of being inside this room at this moment and dealing with the situation I'm in. And I could only try to understand these two things. So I did not allow myself to talk about anything else. And I pretty much, I think, I pretty much almost brutally stuck to these three, three rules for these, in total 56 hours, basically, over 14 minutes. That's an introduction. I mean, also just to complete, to complete the picture, the, the, after the 14 nights, the documentation of this piece, which was 
56 tapes, each one was one hour long, were shown in the university for 14 days in, 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 in correlation. So it was day by day broadcast in the university. It was my way of bringing it back into the university. And then finally, the last uh, part of this project is that it was transcribed and published as, as a book, which is a, basically a separate work than the performance. It's, it's the product, it's, it's almost like, it's almost like this, this work produced another work, and that other work is this book called 17, and then you see the transcriptions, which everything that was said was transcribed and printed and published as a book without any punctuation. But it was, uh, it was broken up by day and hour. So you kind of had a, a sort of chronological, you know, uh, analog of this, this performance. That's, that's it. Um, sure. okay, yeah. this one, I, I think something just that bears really emphasizing about the basic description of the project is, is the fact that it's a two-way mirrored glass. Yes. With a with soundproofing, which means that the sound that goes out is purely what happens inside the box. Yes, and um, it's broadcast through the speakers that were embedded in the glass. So, and the room was mic'd, so basically people outside could hear, but I could not yeah. hear anything was ha that was happening outside or see anything that was happening inside. In fact, what you could see was reflections of yourself. I could only see myself. <laughs> At um, least in three, I mean, in, in the back there was a, a wall that was served as a corridor that was exit and entrance, but the three other walls were mirrors, basically. Which, are, which is, you know, really essential to the project somehow. Um, and I guess, yeah, answering sort of why this discussion happens in this context, I, um, I think it's worth just analyzing a bit further about what that, those formal conditions actually produced or what they actually um, revoked. <coughs> which essentially constitutes the artwork in my view. Um, the, I feel like you put yourself in a situation in which, in a, in a space, in a construction that was a kind of machine producing a particular subjectivity and a particular consciousness. So that was both physical and according to the rules that you gave. Um, one which was, which was going to completely, like, you could you could do the same performance right here, right now, sitting behind his desk, but it would be different. So this is, uh, um, this is kind of how I feel. This, this is kind of the engine behind how things have worked. Um, and those, those conditions, I mean, to highlight some of the major upshots of this somehow, um, I feel that the relation to audience is completely disrupted. Um, you're neither you're, you you have the awareness of a performance, you have the awareness of a potential audience, you have the awareness of being um, accountable for what you say, say and do, but um, with none of the affirmative glances that you get from an audience, um, with none of the feedback or the just even just the, the sort of existence of a human relationship. Um, that being the first kind of condition. Um, I don't know. I mean, uh, so maybe we should say this: that part of part of this decision to make this conversation, just to make it more clear, mm -hmm. part of the conversation to make part of the decision to make this conversation was, you wanted to show a documentation of the piece in the show, and I refused. That's that's important. Yeah. <laughs> so no, 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 no. You said it kind of uh, ambiguous. Oh. Okay, I'm just just to make it very clear. But but that I think but I think that is a good starting point because yeah. I think you were also you had very you seem to have very you know like a very strong you know you had a strong desire to do that and we discussed it quite a bit and I had reasons why I didn't want to do that and and part of the idea of this conversation was to also. You know, I want to understand, kind of, it's still not 100% clear to me, mm -hmm. what your interest really is in this work in relation to your themes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so maybe this can be an impetus for, for the conversation. For sure. Also. Um, it's not easy to uh, elaborate for a very long time, but for me, like, it's, it's a very, it feels... Firstly, the exhibition is curated quite instinctively, and, uh, and the exhibition I guess operates along two lines, works which, which um, make, I mean, this sounds 
external, the ones which make me feel very strongly, one, one thing or another, ones which make simply provoke, trigger, um, or works which discuss provocation, trigger, which actually, you know, so the, which have the, the, uh, this as their content. Um, the, the sort of, although I think that the content of 17 in, a, in an AUC is like easily landable in, in this show, I, this was not particularly, there was nothing particular about that that, that drew me. It was more, I think, this, um, this, this production of a, of a mindset that was not allowing itself to settle or to frame or to produce definitions um, that, would, that would remain. And there's a lot about the project that doesn't remain. And instead, you, there's, there's a condition of total, um, I mean, I won't, uh, maybe, I, maybe I exaggerate, I mean, but um, there, instead there's a condition of, um, as closely as possible, of meaning being broken open quite, quite determinedly. Um, and that, that is a, that's something that I find sort of inherently relevant to the project of what to clarify. Um, I, can, I can sort of go further with that, um, or at least give examples. Um, you know, the, the, the project could have gone as a very kind of nice, sort of fairly literary in, in tone, a uh, series of anecdotes which are all really interesting and which have, can produce really interesting interpretations. And you could have just developed a sort of rather elegantly alive thesis of your life or of your life in that moment. Um, but this was not, and you know, this would have been actually quite satisfying in, in a certain way. But this was the, 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 every time that that kind of started to happen, there were several moments of you simply unworking the process that you recognized emerging through the, through, through the situation. And saying, okay, you know, yesterday, I, you know, starting to identify patterns and how things are going, thinking about how you can work with that, but also by identifying it, you've already destroyed it slightly. Um, you, but the thing, you can see this, you read the book, right? You read the book. Yeah, which I didn't. Okay. And so, it, uh, this, is, this, this is, is the other thing, point, is that yeah. because I'm un, kind of unable to read it, every time I, I, I've, over the years, looked at it and looked at different passages, but I've never been able to sit down and actually read, read it. It's Why? too difficult. For me, just on an absolutely personal level, it's just kind of too difficult to do. Mm -hmm. And so when you say, I have memories, I kind of have memories of this idea of patterns and becoming within the machine, you know, it kind of became in a way like a machine, this space became like a machine. And I have a memory that within this machine, I'm learning the machine. So I'm, you know, I'm the fuel and I'm the object of this, of this architectural machine that is destroying my, my mind in a way. And I'm learning, but at the same time, I'm learning it every day as, as we go along. So I have a memory of this, and I think this is maybe what you're... I have a memory of this in this machine, somehow, happening. Uh, uh, I, have a, I have a small question. During the 14 nights, there were people visiting this? Uh, yes, this space, uh, yes. It was open to the public, but it was not advertised, so it was discovered, in a way. Uh, so, so... Um, so I mean, and I think, I guess, this is kind of what you're referring to. There are moments in the transcripts in which I'm talking about this learning, learning, learning how to cope with being in this situation. Yeah. Is that part of what? Learning you're... how to cope, but also I think like yeah, like learning how to work with the situation. Learning how to work with it. Or... Yeah, I mean, there's a passage in here I could read, if, uh, which I think is interesting just for me because I think there's to hear this in another voice would be totally strange, and I think that's a nice thing to do. Um, but yeah, I see it as like a project that kind of describes itself through its making and its description and its form are kind of the same thing. It, it's like, well, they really get very, very close. Um, and I think that could lead us to discuss how, how and why it's problematic and why I sort of want to display it or to work with the documentation. Yeah. But there's a passage. Should I read a passage? <laughs> it's up to you. Everyone is up to you. Okay, I mean, it's, it's sort of like, I mean, just in terms of examples of the, the condition that we've just described. Um, it's, of course, very hard to know where to plunge in because this is entirely that punctuation. Um, okay, so you've just been describing six main emotions that have kind of formed your entire time. Um, 
joy, ecstasy, anger, loss, ecstasy, anger, alienation, paranoia. That's how it gets listed. Um, in that system, that's just to give context, but uh, we come in on, um, I had nothing to do else to do. Studying was definitely not part of my concept of being in that place. Nothing else to do except exploring your emotional spectrum and pushing it to the extreme. There is something positive in that, but it's also a bit superficial and flat because it's related to a very specific subcultural idea picked up from mass media. It was a real engagement with the self, of course, but through that institutional frame, what I'm trying to get at, or what I think I'm realizing, or maybe I realized, realized this before, but I never really said it that clearly, is that we were as institutional as everybody else. We explored our emotions through the institution, whether with, of, or, with or against, but still through it. I think that these six generalized emotional fields still exist within me and still mark everything I do. That's an example, because in this structure, this situation, with, because in this structure, this situation reflects these six emotions in many different ways. But at least now I have more control over the form and the technique. And that, I think, is important, this idea of a technique, a personal form. This is only relevant if you're interested in the concept of framing an identity for yourself and giving it a motive, a critical moment. Maybe anyway today, I am even more tired than yesterday. It seems every day becomes more tiring in terms of personal technique. I will have to rediscover. I'm still trying to get the system of doing this in a way where I can build my own personal stamina to do this every night without just being more and more exhausted. I guess it's inevitable to be exhausted because it's a very draining experience, but I still need to find out how to do this within my life, within my rhythm. Some things are not in my control, like having to work all day. For some reason, I remember also another thing that the first time I really felt paranoid, and he goes on to, and you go on to a discussion. So this, I mean... It's just more lucid <laughs> somehow. It sounds a bit, the first part sounds quite analytical. So. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, in addition to what that sort of kind of discussing what I described is also this reflection. I mean, there is this kind of um, uh, nested dull situation. Um, you, you mentioned this institution the first time you're talking about it, and you see the second time I think you're talking um, so that's that's kind of the next kind I of mean, space, such a space that interested me also to do with this yeah. project. I mean, I you know maybe in, in this quote, the part where you speak about you know a personal form, it almost has a relation to to kind of thinking about art practice in some ways. It sound like it sounded like to me when we're speaking about it, like some kind of thinking about that also. I, I don't necessarily agree with this position right now, mm -hmm. but I can see that uh, maybe what's happening here is that I'm, you know, discussing these emotions in relation to AUC, and then I'm discussing these emotions in relation to, to this experience, and through that I'm also kind of, it sounds like it's proposing a certain way of understanding what art practice is, because it speaks about a personal, a personal technique and uh, it, it kind of sounds like it's proposing an idea of what form is in a way or how to approach that uh, it's not of course not in a not in a theoretically neat fashion but like it feels like that's that's there is, is that is that part of the what you're trying to um, I to, think so to, con to connect to your argument or something um, less so, but what strikes me more in this point of the conversation now is how I'm realizing that actually your revisitation involves interpretation. Um, something that sort of hasn't occurred to me so strongly, but actually having not read the book yourself and having not revisited it, you still actually now have to find out what you were saying at the time, which I think is quite interesting also. But um, in another of the problems of, of representing. Um, I, yeah, I, I think it would be nice to just talk a little bit about the sort of nested, nested dolls effect, which could I really want to be careful with because this is not a metaphor and um, it's not a, a attempt to produce a kind of light space or anything, but there are just, I found these, or at least what kind of as a curator interested me at this moment, that there was many instances in various consciousnesses or real spaces being described in which a kind of um, 
an embodied consciousness hits up, I should put it down here, against certain violent, maybe productive limitations. And these are described through anecdotes. They're described through the act of you actually being there and getting really angry at times, and, um, or it seems. Um, or in, um, or just simply in, in the fact that this is about the AUC and there's something about your life in the AUC that kind of handles this too. So maybe you can elaborate on that because I think it's, it's essentially also slightly problematic from the proposition. Okay. Uh, this hit, hitting hitting against uh, limits. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I, mean, I don't think I don't think they're 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 equivalent to themselves. I just feel, found found it keep, kept happening in that process. A key point. Yeah. Okay, maybe I don't know. Maybe it's it's a it's it is a bit hard because I don't know where to where to start from. Do I start from the actual memories? Do I start from the form of this of this? Event in a way that's that's a bit of a, a question, but maybe I, I can show a picture of the space from inside and start uh -huh. from that. Okay. Basically, discuss it from that perspective, because I think that that actually uh, plays plays a, a role. Um, yeah, and I think when we talked before, I, I struggled a little bit, particularly with how how and why this was so important. Yeah. So this this is a, a picture a picture from inside the space and um, it's a picture from inside. I, I think it's just important to actually it's never been published or seen or whatever. Nobody went I think went into So anyway, um, yes, it's a picture inside the space. It just gives an, an idea of what you actually see from inside the space, and this, the fact that it is isolated, also in, also in terms of sound, means and because it's glass and mirror, means that the sound is it becomes a very strange. Uh, it's all it's almost it's a space full of things, but it's almost a totally empty space. That's kind of the closest I can come to explaining what it feels like and obviously it has a confessional edge because it's mic'd and there's a chair and a table and you're kind of sitting there to, you know, and that is kind of what it's supposed to produce as an, 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 a kind of a form of, you know, almost a technology in a way, almost as a technology. However, this, this is not, it's not just, I think it's not just a matter, and this is kind of the limit in this case. The limit is that right in front of you, it's you know, it's, it's, it's a mirror, and that's what you know. And I took this, I put this, I took this photograph with a camera, an automated camera, just because I wanted an image of the space without me in its, inside it, just as a document for myself. Actually, I never included it in talks or anything before, um, just to see that, like to see that space empty, and that space of of limits is flipped. And from the outside, it's completely, you know, visible. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's in a basically, it's in a dark room, and it's the only thing that's lit in that dark room. It's, it's almost like a stage, and it, it, uh, it plays with the aura of, you know, that. It plays with the aura of the highly framed, you know, highlighted, bracketed space, and. So these are the two sides of the equation. However, I think, and this is the most important, significant element in that, there is a limit, there's a border, and that border looks different from one side and the other side. However, uh, and this, is, this image is for me really the secret of the work. What you see here is, this is from the side of the, of the room, and there are actually two rooms inside of each other. That's for the, so that it can be soundproofed. So, it is, you know, a mirrored, a mirrored room, and inside of it, there's another glass room. It's two. It's actually two rooms inside of each other. That was important for soundproofing, and we tried to, you know, to suck air and blah blah blah. It doesn't matter anyway. And the the speakers were embedded in that in that space between the two the two glass the two glass things. So you see the speakers here. However, as you notice, as you notice, you can see that they're 
infinitely reflected, which means they're, you know, the way you put two mirrors in front of each other, whatever is in the middle gets infinitely reflected, but the person who's taking the photograph and stuff is not, does not appear in the reflection. And, and I mean, I'm just using this as a demonstration. I think this is really kind of the hinge upon which this whole piece works, is that it creates a situation in which communication and the, the, the actual dynamics of communication are altered. Because in a situation like this, where a reflection is possible, the viewer is actually the one who has become invisible here, in a sense. And it is, it is, it is, a, I mean, I'm kind of trying to analyze it, you know, it didn't work out all these things, I just kind of knew what I wanted to do. But in, I'm kind of trying to analyze it now in the sense that uh, I think you're in a situation where the viewer implicitly realizes that they are unrecognized. It's not just about me not seeing people looking at me. It's also about the viewer watching a living human being in real time and realizing that that person is, exists in another space and is not registering their presence, although they're completely, uh, completely on display. Basically, it's a form of display. And so, I, I think, I've said this before, but I repeat it because I think it's important. What I was told by, by several, several people who had attended is that the, that the, the you know, like, the, the, the strange sensation of looking straight into my eyes and not, not, you know, not registering any recognition. And that this kind of, uh, this just left them with a strange feeling. But I mean, this this is all a bit very general. But what I'm trying to say is that this creates a condition. Like these these technical elements create a condition that I think affects the very basis of how a situation is being conducted. So you know, let's say if I also if I came here and I sat down and I opened a beer and I started saying, in 1996 I. I know I walked on Tuesday, I walked into university, blah, 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 blah. This is totally, totally, totally different, obviously, you know. Uh, because of these elements, this act of, first, it, I think it impacts how I'm remembering these things and how I'm trying to deal with them, but I think it also impacts what that means, what that act of remembering means. Somehow. Say that, that, that's pretty good. That it actually, like, for example, that very structural, formal, and technical decisions uh, actually alter the meaning of these words, oh. you know, and so that it's very different than if I'm writing an autobiography, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, mm. uh, when I'm 27 years old, mm. which yeah. is kind of the age at where I did this piece, and that's very, very different, you know. I'm not writing an autobiography, in a sense I'm not writing an autobiography, in a sense I'm, it's, it's trying to create a situation which produces, it produces history. This is kind of, I, I, even then actually I consciously thought of it in those terms, mm -hmm. that it was a situation that is trying to produce history, you know, trying to produce, you know, not produce history, I mean produce a, a, a document of history, yeah. basically, a way of writing a history in a way. Uh, a history, would you say, about a thesis? Because I think that this is something that attempts to be, I mean, you, you draw judgments and you, you make, uh, you make uh, conclusions, but they're very quickly kind of moved on from, and there's no attempt to, I mean, it's, it's almost like, no, I don't think it is this, but you could mistake it for a kind of a pure reality, or a, pu a pure retelling, which of course is impossible. But you, maybe there's, I mean, what's the relationship of, of this form of history? to the sort, of, the sort of historical, historian's dream of a pure retelling, which is impossible, of course. Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, it never, I mean, of course it never claims that. It yeah. never, it never, first no, it, never, it, it never claims this pure retelling. And uh, I think because of these rules, because of these kind of, the rules of, I will only speak about the actual event as I remember it, mm -hmm. and as, and I will also only speak about how I try to understand that. So the situation, you know, the text that is produced is obviously is obviously positioned. It's obviously 
coming from that perspective. This is never, never denied or hidden. It's actually the material of the work is the position of where this kind of text is coming from. Mm -hmm. So the, you know, it's part of the material of the work that it is coming from this specific person's you know, mouth in this specific kind of construction. Um, and also, uh, the, because you also witness, uh, you, you, I mean, I guess a, a physical attempt at, at coming to terms with something, you know, uh, because I'm not talking all the time. You're, you're watching someone who is thinking about something or struggling with it or unable to deal with it or, you know, trying to avoid it or then coming to terms with it or, you know, failing or succeeding or whatever or somehow realizing something or not realizing something. You're actually watching uh, a process that is not, uh, that is not just a declaration. So it's not just a declarative kind of situation where someone is declaring something. It's actually an, an and it's not an, ina an enactment, you know. It is an act, you know. In a way, it's a it's a framed event. So it's an event that's happening that is framed within a specific format. Mm -hmm. I think this makes it different in the sense of what does it do to a historical form of writing. I think that makes it. Uh, Sorry, not a historic form, a form of writing that is that I'm claiming now that is able to to, to provide a certain approach to history to be more accurate. Uh, I I want to return a little bit to recognition because I think it's very interesting how you say that this that this in particular, or so the whole condition, but in particular this condition actually affects the words the words that said the the the, the, the actual. Um, yeah, the, the spoken word entirely and everything that it produced. Um, and because I'm a curator and I always want to recuperate everything according to my frameworks, um, I recognition is like a very important notion to me in Photo Cairo and in other dealings with other artists. Um, Cause so I kind of want, I'm sort of interested in exploring that further. I think we talked about it very, I mean, I described it very shallowly in by talking about the affirmatory glance of an audience member, um, or the hopefully affirmatory glance. But um, we can maybe take that a bit further, um, which I need your help with. Okay. Um, recognition, I kind of want to, I, um, I feel has immense power as something that, um, that, that, uh, that is profoundly different to identification. I've gone through this before in other talks, I'm sorry that it's a repeat. But um, identification being purely the based on knowledge and based entirely on um, uh, descriptive kind of provable facts about a person or a thing, whereas recognition can apply to um, a, a sort of a shared consciousness, and this has this sort of erotic element in that um, a great a great deal of knowledge goes behind recognition without actually any information being passed by. So when you when you catch the eye of somebody who you know is thinking the same thing as you, and it's funny, and yet you've never spoken to that person, or um, the fact that you know if something um, if something major if a major um, you know if, if a major event happens, how how does everybody then decide that this is a major event? How does everyone collectively respond? So it's it's a function that for me produces um, like somehow inexplicably produces collective actions and um, not necessarily, and, and also without, without a proper form of consensus, which I think is also very important. So this is why this notion is important. So when, when, you, when you get down to this very, um, like, highly, highly individual situation, you can, we can maybe like analyze that further. Um, that's why it's important. Yeah, I mean, there is also, but what's happening here is the opposite, in a mm -hmm. sense. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you've taken you're, that away, and it's kind of important to, to how things go. Yeah, I think like the way this, the structure works, the, that physical structure of this room, is by doing this, it, it, brings, it, brings the, it brings the basic conditions of coexisting with someone in a space to the foreground. So we're in a, in a place where you know, there's a, 
there's also the audience kind of, I mean, they're not exactly an audience also, because the performer is absent in a way. And I don't know, I actually don't know the details of how this happened. I have a little bit of information from my sister who, who was documenting the whole thing, so she saw the whole thing, and she was telling me a little bit about what happened outside in the room between people and stuff. So I know some little stories, uh, but I, you know, but I don't really know exactly what, in quotation marks, the audience was like or what this did with the audience. I, I'm not sure. But I suspect that it, because a change is something on a structural level, uh, it's, it's, yes, it brings it to the, to the foreground, but maybe, I mean, I'm thinking out loud, you know. So maybe that it brings it up to the foreground, but not to reveal it. You know, maybe this and not to go, ah, the look, yeah, not to say this. The work has done this; it has revealed the condition. I don't ah. think. I don't think. I. I think I've never been interested in this person. You know, like this idea of this idea of what art is. Kind of. It's not an idea of an artist. It's an idea of an artist itself. Just to be fair. Some people it's an idea of what artists. Yeah, no, but, but I'm not. Yeah, yeah, okay. Idea is that right now? Yeah, but um, I think what it does is that it brings this. It brings this forth. This condition of you know this the basic conditions of coexisting together, and it makes it part of the work. It becomes part of the material of the work, I guess. You know, so part of the material of this piece, as much as it is, you know, soundproof, mirrored glass, and and speakers and mics and the, the artist as a subject and blah blah blah, is also the room and the condition that is there. Ultimately, I mean, it, it doesn't have to be spelled like that in the caption. That would be kind of pretentious. But if one is to think about it, I guess it really becomes like that with this piece at least. Okay. And I mean, just to, to sort of close that point about the, the, the lack of recognition, the possibility of recognition, um, it's like I just also think that there's this kind of intense proxi proximity again going on somehow within the work. There's this kind of, it's all very internal, it's all quite. Like spatially in, in every other way, but um, but then there's this like total alienation, and you know something that uh, I also find quite powerful is is um, how like um, highly ha ha sort of let's say radical distancings and radical proximities, which can produce like a lot of, like something much closer than let's say a straightforward attempt to represent something as faithfully and as closely and uh, as, as sincerely as possible. You can sort of um, distance it very, very far, and then produce a very, very strong closeness to it. Um, so maybe there's something like that going on with uh, with uh, sort of the lack of this this I need, but I don't know. Um, that's just to kind of close that notion, maybe. Okay. I think I need to take that on a bit further. Um, yeah, I think um, I think it'd be good to. There was a comment I think that I think Angela made earlier that I thought struck me uh, as possibly applicable to this work, which and maybe I mean I wrote down several quotes and I can't remember which is yours and which is just stupid things I said. Which, um, but I think this is your your being. You said a form that questions its own conditions of possibility, and I thought there's like maybe something to reflect against between these two ideas. I can also invite you to do that. But um, I think this is an operation here, somehow. Um, I, think, I, I think, I also think uh, that we're very abstract. Yeah. I don't know how it's, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. It's a, di it's a difficult thing to do because the work is not an image or, you know, because it is this, and the content of the work is, uh, is I don't know how many pages. So it's a bit difficult, but I don't know if there is a way to, to maybe. Okay. Well, I mean, this is the, this is a question that, like, I sort of, um, like, I think in order to, to make it less abstract, you have to be descriptive. And what's the easiest thing to describe and to this kind of um, after we've talked about the structure is actually the content. And um, I think it's good to have a discussion about why we're not talking about content particularly, even though the content is entertaining, quite sensational, quite informative, um, quite, it's quite an interesting document. Um, and as you say, you've produced a history. But I think it would be good to sort of go over that. Okay. 
to 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 explain why we're not talking about content. Yeah, or we'll talk about content and say this isn't the important part. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, maybe it's better. No. But everybody. Wait, can I just yeah. ask, just to clarify? If you just read a passage of the transcript, how is how are you not talking about that? And also, there's, I don't know, I just I mean, it's thought... it's a sample. It's a sample. Yeah. <laughs> but it's it's Ah, oh, it's true. It's representative. It's content, but it's and also... And this is content. I mean, the structure is content too, right? But it was content that happened to be self-referential to its own form, which is why it was read out, because this was... Again, I think this is a... It's, it's a, in order to try and make the point that this, that this form is almost um, completely writing itself as part of its own content. This isn't entire, This isn't true of the entirety of the piece. It's a great deal of just, like, stories. Stories. Um, and, yeah. Well, I can say... Can I, like, can okay. I just ask a very concrete question to the process of the two weeks? And, like, also on the content, like, how did it change? Over the because I guess like you have some reflections coming first day, second day, third day, and then like how do you produce new thought? How was there like a process in that lapse of time? Well, I mean, it was it was a, a learned thing. It was a situation. I kind of threw myself into the situation, and then I just started learning what does it mean to be in that room every day. And what does it mean to deal with this situation? What does it mean to remember these things and to think about them? And so, yes, I mean, obviously every day was different. And what, what Mia read out kind of points out a little bit to the, that there, there was a consciousness of thinking about how am I here in a way. Uh, by the end, by the end, it started getting easier and easier. And it really felt like you know, learning how to drive a car or something, you know. By the end, I started to feel, and I was like, yes, it's good that it's only 14 days because it was like really a threshold. I felt like maybe if it was 30 days, then, you know, it would, it would really transform into a point where I would be completely dominating that structure and I would control it completely. And so somehow 14 days ended up being really the threshold where... You know, I started, by the end of it, I started to feel I was in control. Not completely, but I started to really feel that. And, uh, yeah, so it, it, was, it, was, it was like, you know, learning in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> learning by being in there. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have uh, just a, a also a response to the abstract. The fact yeah. that it's abstract. I mean, this this goes towards if we're going to have an argument about showing it in front of Cairo, which we've already done. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> is, is, you know, yes, it's abstract because there is not access to the material. No one is, yes. is able to see it. We can, yes. we, actually, we can play, I think it would be nice to play a play. But um, yeah. this was, the, this was the, like the, the basic hunger in me as, as an audience member and the basic hunger in me as a curator is I want to see and I want to show. Yeah. And, the structure can be described through that as well. Um, yeah. I mean, the thing is, I, yeah, but it, it, it is like, for example, this piece, I didn't show any documentation of it since it's since it was done as a, as a work. I never showed documentation of it as a work. The book existed. I was happy I you know to do book launches and treat it as a book in these cases. So it, it took almost 10 years. I, Finally, in Salt was the first time I present documentation of it in an exhibition. And then it was for me justified because it was part of what this exhibition was as a sort of survey. And I felt it was, yeah, you can mm -hmm. show that. And there were decisions about how to present it. And it was the only work in, in this exhibition that was not an artwork. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was, that was clear to me. It was like very important that with a piece like this, where does its boundaries as, as an artwork uh, and as a document begin and end? Mm. And so I think in, in, for me it's very important that they are not confused. And so therefore this is, this is kind of how it was shown in, in this exhibition that's on, that's on now. And here it's, shown, it's really shown as, as just a, a, you know, a form of documentation of that project. 
and the video, there's only one, again it's a sample, a three minute excerpt from these 56 hours, and that was a decision, you know, not to provide all 56 hours, not to provide 10 selections, to provide one sample so that it's communicated, something of the experience is communicated to the audience, but it's clear it's not an artwork, you know? There's all these things we're taking into consideration. So in Photo Cairo, when we had this discussion, um, I had an issue with, with putting the piece in an exhibition because then I felt that boundary would not be as clear. Yeah. The boundary between it as, as a document and it's passed as an artwork. It's a huge thing to do. It's a huge. You know, uh, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be. Wouldn't be so clear, especially in a group show. You know, like there are yeah. certain things, especially in a group show, in which other artworks are shown. And so these were kind of motivations. Yeah. And I think these motivations are are, you know, kind of very related to a lot of your points. I don't know. Somehow, you know, the fact that they're being thought about, I think, has to do uh, with what that work is. Yeah, I think that, that makes sense. I just think I probably don't care as much about that point as you do. It's simply enough. Like, I, I, I guess also it's not my work, so yeah. I'm not going to see something as documentation. Uh, that's, like, that's okay, you know. Uh, sorry, Jahira. No, it's just that this is kind of exactly my question about the piece which I never thought of before, even though I went. Um, you said something now about memory that the questions that you repeated because you said it's different than writing an autobiography which strikes very true and I, that was very clear in going to one of the days or more than one because there's it's also the first time that I realized that you can never repeat that piece so I actually completely yes. see Hassan's yeah, point nice like it's not possible to exhibit this piece again and there's something you said about not being able to remember because yeah. you're not commute. Like it's almost like personal memory is shared, and that by it not being shared, I don't know. There was something that was interesting there. So I was trying to understand exactly what it is you're saying about memory again. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, your relation to this thing about remembering. Yes. Well, I mean. My relationship to 17 and AC, what had happened in 2003, and you mean? Well, I mean, what's very clear to me is that this is, I can never do this again. Yeah. You know, it's very clear to As me. This way. is like, if I can probably do it again, I can probably go into a room and sit and drink and talk, whatever. It cannot, yeah. and it would not be the work, and it would be totally disingenuous, and it would be a lie. It would be a complete yeah. lie, as far as I'm concerned. You know? uh, as Mia said, I was just invited to do exactly that, <laughs> just like a few weeks ago, which I of course turned down. Yeah. But it was, I mean, someone did invite me and said, you know, you could do it again from your position now. <laughs> she, you said it as a joke, and then I told her, yes, but someone actually, you know, did extend this invitation. So, which is ridiculous, which obviously means that somehow they don't really understand the work. I think I also proposed an open mic. No, but I, yeah. you, you, you said you can't remember Sorry, you said now you can't remember the stories or remember the work or that the story... That's what I was asking. Oh, okay. There's something I think that's just erased something for me that I'm not so sure about. Okay, like right, with. like you mean right you now, me right now book. cannot remember. I cannot, well, as I said, I didn't read yeah. the book. Yeah. And of course, I do remember being in this, or not here, being in the room. And I do remember, I have memories of it. I have. I remember the stories. Every now and then, I, you know, open this and read some small bits of it. I have marked certain bits that I know, so that I actually, when I need to quote from it, I quote those bits. So I have yes, but I don't. Of course, I don't remember everything I said. Then you know, so it's 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 weird, kind of. Thing. No, I mean, why is it different for you than an autobiography exactly? Again, why is it different? Yeah. Oh, because I mean the the process obviously is. I mean, the, an autobiography, in any case, would subscribe to the literary kind of code. You know, I would the way I would treat it is I, not just aesthetically, but but you know, it would my relationship to this material would be 
he who sits and reshapes their life and writes it down and presents it to the world. You know, that's kind of... But in this case, it's, this is not the relationship. In this case, yeah. it is a situation in which I, I'm dealing with something and I don't know what's going to come out of it at all. You know? Also, in an autobiography, you don't know, you can remember things you don't remember, etc. Of course, I am aware of that. But I mean, the situation itself, as that's why I say it's a bit like a machine that produces an object. And this kind of object is this text, you know? But, so there is really a large element that is outside my control in, in this situation, uh, in which, you know, there is real danger, you know, somehow, actually, in my, you know, like, just in my head, maybe, but there is, there was real danger, you know? I didn't know what was gonna happen to me. That's really true, you know? I, I mean, I, I thought, Maybe I would, you know, be damaged. But no, I, yeah. I don't know. I just think, I don't know, I can't really get it yet, but I just, first time I realized that it's really interesting that, for example, you're not trying to come to terms with yourself, that's very clear. Yeah. And sure. you work, uh, it works not doing that, which an autobiography kind of does. And it, so it stops from being an autobiography, but it also, it's impossible to show the piece again. And there's something more. Yeah, Locking it's impossible, but, in the room and but, but the book exists. Yeah, but the, the book is a yes. really different experience. And it produces, I mean, it produces a lot of works, like the 14-day now discussion. That's not a work. That's not, that's not an artwork. I mean, it, okay, it works. It produces stuff. That's right. a conversation. That's a series of conversations. It's not a work. Can I just ask a super, super quick question, which is maybe just to tie this back into... I mean, it's interesting. I thought it was sort of and almost humorous to um, have Hassan's piece that is in Photocar 5 in an, in an exhibition that has its own subtitle but is still called Photocar 5 that is just text. So I wondered if you could talk about how you went from your discussions about not Hassan's refusal to show this documentation of this work or this work to showing it secure and how Hassan felt about that and also me how you felt about showing just pure text work in a photo. Oh, that was very, yeah. I mean, very straightforwardly, I understood Ponto Cairo for a long time as, as ironically not a solely photo based project. That was clear from the last one. It was clear from the critiques of the last one. And I was happy to continue with uh, to, to be exposed to those critiques because um, it's something to do with how CIC has developed as an institution. It's something to do with my size as a curator, which is why I do what I do, and that's kind of primary. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's also that, you know, I think that there can be an argument made, I won't make it, but there can be an argument made for um, the image, and you could do it this way as well, but I won't do it that way. So I don't really, um, yeah, I don't really find that, that audacious in the end. Um, as for the decision to show that work, I mean, it's, well, it was a long process, and um, I, I think it. Yeah, I mean, you can tell the whole story, I guess. Um, I mean, there, it's a work. Insecure is, is related to Seventeen and in AC. I think somehow it's a work related to it because it is. It it takes into account what you were saying about limits, and it kind of uses the medium of instructions to think about limits, about the limits of of oneself, in a way. And I think that's a current in, in 17 AUC. And also, I mean, the other, I, mean, I can be very candid, the other element was that I, I also wanted to show a very, 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 very simple piece in Photo Power. Because it mainly was a technical limitations and how stressful that can be. Um, but also, I mean, it was always a piece that was on our discussion list, but um, and it could always have been shown in addition to uh, this or the other works that we discussed. Um, one of the reasons it didn't come to the fore, and I mean, I'll be really, really straightforward and honest, one of the reasons it didn't come to the fore in our discussions, first and foremost, is that it doesn't take so much discussing, whereas showing uh, don't tap, tap, don't tap, which was the first conversation, takes a lot of discussion, just purely practically. So this took our energy and our time. And then uh, landing on this extremely simple piece is, uh, 
long ago, it's been on site because I made that decision. I agree, it's, I, I feel like it's extremely relevant to the show as well. So. Yeah. And and to this and to seventeen eighty, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I yeah. easily make a connection between these two pieces, you know, in a way. Lots of tiny letters. Lots of tiny letters. Yeah, there's a question here. Can I read the glasses? Is there any there? Um, I don't know if it's uh, quite. Uh, if I, can, if I am allowed to put this question, but why did you choose this period of your life to speak about? And uh, the second question, but all together. Uh, did you, in your, in your mind, was, was this, was there a distinct, you were speaking to whom? Who was you? That's all. Thank yes, you. thank you. Uh, well, this, there are several things. One, this piece, took place in 2003. I graduated from AC in 95, so it was eight years later. Um, it came at a point in which, in my own, in my own practice, I was uh, unsatisfied with a certain tone. You know, I, I have to explain this a little bit, so to make it very clear, um, with examples. So when I first started, you know, making work or something like that was in was actually in university in a, in a specific context, and then uh, when I when I in '95 when I graduated, this was the first public, actually publicly shown work, not just in relation to friends, but in a public place, and uh, at that period of time, and then I made a lot of videos also at this period of time, lots of things and sound and things like this. And at that period of time, this work was, my consciousness about this work was not so hyper, you know, kind of reflective in a positive fashion. I mean, I was, it was just kind of, you know, there was a, a bit more this kind of instinctive, let's say, attitude towards it. And also originally I started with music and so I kind of carried that attitude into this kind of production also. And then with time, uh, from the mid-90s till around 98, 99, when I started, I, I worked as a teacher for children, and then I, I started working with, with in magazines and writing and things like this. And also when I started working with a magazine, and as a person who did interviews, I did uh, a lot of interviews with people, and I actually developed like, interview techniques and things like this, my work changed at that moment in relation to my professional job. And it became, I produced documentaries. Suddenly I was making documentaries, somehow. And uh, anyway, out of that, there was also then, my actual art practice was changing and it, it had there this tone of kind of, uh, Speaking about the world was not making me comfortable. I was like, I could hear it in my work. And even when I look back at these works now, I, I think some of them are very strong and some of them had a lot of impact when they were shown. I think so. But I could hear that tone and I was unhappy about it in around, around 2002, to be very precise. In 2002, I was unhappy with that tone in my work and I was, I desired a return to you know the collapsing guitar or whatever it was and to to you know and then when this invitation came from the university that I had gone to in which somehow my whole consciousness <laughs> had been reshaped and broken down also when that invitation came I kind of I didn't I can't remember when or what and we talked about this but there was a moment when I knew that the title would be 17 and in, and in AUC I knew that this would be the title I knew it would tackle this, and I felt that this would be kind of, suddenly I would be able to, in a way that I am comfortable with, to speak, and maybe you'll not like that, but to speak about myself in a way that I would be comfortable with. And because my memory of these old pieces, I mean, and if, if you see these old pieces from 95 or 96, or like Lung Fan and other works, uh, they're not like speaking about yourself, you know, but they have this kind of, unconditional energy of coming out and going, you know, 
And in 2003, I, I desired a return to that, but I know you can never go back. I'm aware of that. And so I didn't try to go back to this, to this explosion. I tried to create a form that can tackle my history in this extended way so that it can be you know, personal and narcissistic, but also make sense in a certain fashion. And this is kind of what developed. I think it's more or less what you said, but just something that you're kind of um, attempting to avoid and we're already recognizing as a kind of uh, thing coming through in, in the art scene is, is work, you say, work that speaks about the world, this kind of sociologically, often sociologically descriptive work, which this is not, I wouldn't say this, I wouldn't say it's, it's totally alien from that either because of the content, but um, it's, I just think it's interesting today that I feel that that tone of work is also starting to disappear from the art scene here now, uh, mm -hmm. but has, has taken a lot of time to do so. I mean, it's, we can go further about that. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, I get it's, I'm just saying this was how I felt about the work. It wasn't, I'm not saying you can't speak about the world. And I also don't think, it also, you know, and I also don't think that it means that the work becomes disassociated and and kind of claims to be pure. I don't mean that at all. But just that it doesn't speak about the world. You know, it could be of the world or, you know, something like But it doesn't, I wasn't comfortable with that speaking about, like, this underlining about that relationship was really mm -hmm. troubling me. Uh, yes, and it's possible, yes, I think, to say that uh, it's a tendency, and um, we can talk about the voiceover. I have big critiques of the voiceover, but anyway, but you know, it, it's definitely a tendency in, in the, in the uh, I don't want to make big statements, but I think it has been a tendency in a lot of the work that happened in this location here mm -hmm. over the past 10, 15 years. But yes, I agree. I think it's it is disappearing somehow, seen or already retreating in a way. Other, um, so I wanted to just talk a little bit before the wrap up because it's been a while. Um, the talk a little bit about the, the book in relationship to the piece. Um, the book is a separate piece, uh, and also have further questions. But I mean, I think there's something just to kind of observe about the reading of the book, which. Um, I did over a few nights, and again a little while ago, as part of research, and found that it can only be speed read. It can't be read. I think it's to do with the lack of punctuation. It can't be read. Um, like at a nice pace, you sort of have to zoom through things. Um, I don't know. Sleep and then open a few more pages and then sleep, and they sort of did it this way. But um, the. This produces, it was a very strange way of experiencing it because it's highly intense and then when I close the book I forget everything. Mm -hmm. And I had to make it extremely strong. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And you're still pretty good It's true. I mean, of course I remember certain bits, but it's, um, and, and there is, there is a, a change in tone, there is a change in gradient throughout it that is very marked, but um, you know, to be able to make notes I had to like, you know, dog ear the pages and I couldn't simply go, oh yes, this is the part where, I mean, there's a constancy to it, just purely because of the punctuation, I think. So the experience of reading it, and then when I saw it, and I had never seen the documentation, when I saw the documentation at Salt, I had never realized, that, I mean, it, I should have figured it out, but I never realized that actually he talks very slowly in this thing. Um, because, yeah, it would have taken you about 20 minutes to speak this in <laughs> case I was reading it. Yeah. So it's just, I don't know, maybe we can talk about pace. Um, mm -hmm. and, and how this, this this particular way of applying the text, you know, produces a different intensity, but one that maybe is like sort of in uh, in, uh, in substitution for the for the immediacy of the experience. Well, I mean, I I think that and this has to do with your discussion earlier of representation. That the book does not aim to represent. Mm -hmm. It does not. To it does not aim to represent the, the piece. Yeah, yeah. It is an object produced out of it. And also when when uh, when we were transcribing the, the text and discussing the design uh, with the publishers, I was, uh, you know, I was like very happy. It was partially, you know, he, the publisher suggested, the designer and publisher suggested 
that the margins be so small because it had to some do with cost as well and page number and stuff. But I was very happy, I was actually very happy with that because I felt that anything in the design of this book that went towards uh, this, this sense of an object, you know, that, that, you know, that you can build a, a relationship with that is, not, that is not the relationship you build with an autobiography or a novel or, you know, but that has its own kind of, you know, uh, uh, its, its own parameters. It's not simply the words from the piece in the book, it's not yes, the book in the book. Exactly, yeah. it's not simply the words from the performance in the book. And this lack of punctuation made a lot of sense because I remember that also in, in the discussion, yeah, we said, okay, there's time. There's the element of time that is in the performance. And it actually comes into the structure of the book because every hour is labeled. So you can tell by the, by the size of the chapter if, if it was a slow pace or a fast pace. But that's a very subtle, it's a very subtle kind of hidden you know, piece of information about the performance. Uh, but I was in discussion with them. I was aware that this lack of punctuation discussion with the designer, this lack of punctuation would would mean that the reader would kind of speed read and that there would be this kind of constant unedited flow. So in a way my voice would be transposed into the heads of the reader. But also it, and it, 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 that that I was very excited about. But it also sort of holds you back from the structures of reason in writing. Like you can build an argument by where you put the, 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 the full stop in a sentence and where you mm -hmm. and you feel compelled then if you put the full stop of course you just feel compelled by the structures of writing so this yes. kind of took that away but yes. it also meant that there was no unintentional later interpretation placed in the material yes but it's also a lie because it transforms the thing it transforms it, but there's no because I'm speaking in sentence you know, at least yeah, in parts so, I'm speaking yeah. in sentences and I'm stopping and I'm starting uh, I am building arguments yeah. You know, and I could have tried to mirror that in the text, mm. but the decision was the excitement was not not to do this. I, there was actually I was excited. I was excited by there will be no punctuation, and the reader will dip into it anywhere, and they will read and read and read and read and read till they're breathless, you know, mm. till they can't read anymore. And I was excited by that possibility, and that possibility had to do with this form of a printed text, and I didn't feel the the need to to stay true. To the performance, but rather to transpose and maybe discover new impacts through, through the through the text itself. That, yeah, it was that was con I mean conscious in a way. It was conscious. I just wanted to say though, but when you speak or we speak, we we have punctuation. Yes. I mean, we, yeah. What I mean is that 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 this text in the book then. They may be the same words, but the pauses are all gone. Are gone. Yes. So in that sense, it's not exactly the same text because text is punctually, I mean, exactly. oral text. Yes, yes, absolutely. Text. That's, that's so exactly what I was just saying. But I was excited by that change. Oh, I, I, I thought you were speaking to the fact that it was the same. No, logic. no, it's a product of it, but it's a transformation. So this experience kind of produces this text. But it gets transformed as it as it becomes a book and a text, etc. It becomes transformed, and in this transformation, I even get excited about the possibility of the fact that there is no punctuation, there is no pause, and therefore you can explore the same words in a different form. That, for example, the reader would be reading voraciously, and that this voice would be in their mind in a way that becomes more possible in the text lacking punctuation, actually. And that was something that excited me about this transformation. So I'm not, I'm not a purist. I'm not, I'm not saying this is the performance and I'm going to replicate it in this text. I am I'm being accurate in the sense that it is the transcriptions. They are unedited, but they are transformed as they move into a new form. And they try to fit that form in, even with new desires. You know, like these desires were born the moment I started thinking of publishing it as a book. Who's the publisher? It was the right. Uh, it's Mertz, Mertz, which is a Belgian publisher. Uh, they do publish mostly art books and. Can we get it here? Sorry. Is it available in color? 
Yeah, and they're in a long time ago an AC bookstore. Do we have further questions? Okay. <laughs> 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 Thank you. No, I, my original question had just been about the fitting, the decision not to include it in Photo Cairo, but. My original question has been about the decision not to include the piece in Photo Cairo, what that said or revealed about the work itself, but I think that that was covered. But um, I, I guess the other thing about this work is it, it kind of has an afterlife in the sense that people can read these very intimate stories about your past. And uh, I remember saying to, you saying to me once that sometimes you're surprised that people know these things about you because you've forgotten that you've revealed them in this yes. context. So, um, it's, it's not a question, it's just a, a comment in a, in a sense that it was very, uh, in a way it's, it's quite, it makes you quite vulnerable because you do talk in a great deal of detail about other people also in your life and um, so I imagine that that would have been part of the emotional difficulty of the project. But it's not a question, it's just a comment. <clears throat> so very much for sitting through this long but not quite long as it would have been today um, <laughs> and for your amazing contributions as discuss discussing in the process so yeah so thank you very much thank you Hassan <laughs>